Does the material that your tiller bolts are made out of affect the way the bow feels, especially in regards to vibration? We're gonna find out in this video. I'm gonna to put to the test aluminum, steel, and precision machine steel to the test using accelerometers to measure the vibration that is being put into the actual bow itself. And we'll see how much of a difference the material or the fitment of the actual tiller bolts makes to you, the archer. So before I get too far into this video, I want to announce that we do have these precision tiller bolts here from Kaminsky Archery, and they are now available in black. If you go to my website, jkaminsky.com, I'll have links in the description below and a card at the top up there where you can grab a set of these black tiller bolts. They are available for pre-sale at the moment, and all of the information on when they will ship is available on my website. Again, that's jkaminsky.com. Now let's get into the fun stuff. Recently, I went to Austria and I met with Thomas, my partner here at Kaminsky Archery, making all these fun things. And we put some accelerometers on the bow, and then we shot the bow, this GMX-3, as a recurve, an Olympic-style recurve. Right now it's set up as a bare bow. Basically, I put to the test the aluminum tiller bolts that are very commonly found on most Hoyt risers, with the exception of the steel ones that have come out recently this year on this GMX-3 riser, and then a set of precision tiller bolts. They weren't black like this one. They were actually the ones that are just stainless, the silver ones. But there's no difference other than just the actual coating to make them black. They're still both made out of stainless. And they're both were the same size. 375 thousandths of an inch outside diameter. Now, as an archer, I could feel various differences between the different tiller bolts, a bit of reduction in vibration, and a bit quieter actually as well. Not only that, as you've seen in the past, I like to do some tests on the bows to see the actual fitment between the actual limb and the tiller bolt interface, because it's very important in regards to keeping your limbs aligned and how quickly you're able to sight in in a tournament or you know when you go to shoot for the first time in a day. For me, I really prefer to have a nice tight fit. Not only do I know that my limbs are aligned or my bow is staying aligned throughout the day, but also it feels much better. So putting these accelerometers on the bow itself to measure it was an interesting test and I was excited to do it. Feels like more high frequency. Yeah, that one was not the best job. Yeah, it doesn't. So no, I get, because the limbs are completely out of sync. On that one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just was gonna say it doesn't feel um, as easily consistent. The steel bolts makes it seem like mm. relatively. Oh, that one was better. I think it was actually grip pressure related. That one was also bad. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. It's yeah, just, but you, you can see it's not. Like, I, I, I can feel more change from shot to shot with the aluminum bolts. The steel bolts, either the steel or the fitment. One or the other is. One it, or the other. It yeah. feels more consistent. It could be the fitment also. You could, that could actually also come from. From like, weight. Yeah. Well, it depends. Maybe the limbs settle here versus here, yeah. and then the next yeah. shot they want to move. Or yeah. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now I'm about to share with you the actual data. I'll go over it here on my phone in a second and I'll display it on the screen, but I'm also sending it out to people who are signed up on my mailing list through my website, jkaminsky.com. And I've also sent out some data recently as well, testing the OEM pocket dampeners on this GMX 3 series riser and put it to the test against the ramrod powdered tungsten weights. And there was a bit of a difference there and it was very interesting to see the actual data. 
If you haven't seen that video yet, I will put a link in the description below and a card at the top up there. The way we actually did the test was mounting accelerometers to the front of the riser facing towards the target. So you have a top pocket and a bottom pocket reading. Now, if you look at the actual data itself, the PSD data is actually showing a logarithmic display of the frequency in a wide band and it shows you the peak value. It adds up both the positive and negative uh, axis as far as how the actual movement is concerned and measures the peak actual force, not the total amount of vibration, just the biggest peak. And so you can see, you know, roughly in the two to 300 Hertz range is where most of the vibration or at least most of the force is in the system, which is very common. And that's pretty standard for archery because that's really the frequency that the string and the limbs oscillate between that range. Now, as you look and go down the, the line, when you go from uh, the aluminum setup down to the steel setup and then further down the line into the precision tiller bolts, you'll see the actual peak value does drop a considerable amount, especially going from steel to precision. And the biggest difference that we see there in the peak value is how snugly the actual fork of the limb fits onto the shank of the tiller bolt. When it's nice and snug, you can see the peak value is considerably lower on the precision tiller bolts. Now, if we look at the RMS data, it's very different. It's a linear display of the actual frequency in Hertz down below. And then you'll see the two different colors, the bar graph of the uh, top pocket and the bottom pocket displayed in orange and bluish purple. Now, up in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see mean acceleration in G's, the RMS data, the front and side, they're labeled incorrectly. It should be front and or top and bottom rather, not, not front and side. Then you look down at the aluminum going to the steel, small amount of reduction, but then a bit more of a dramatic reduction when you go to the actual precision tiller bolt. But where you see the biggest difference is if you look in the upper left-hand corner where it says mean acceleration in Gs, the RMS data, when you take those numbers, those things are just the total amount of energy throughout the entire spectrum. Now what's different on this RMS data that is different than the PSD data is that this isn't the peak force, it's the total amount of vibration within the given window of where the trigger was when the shot broke, slightly before that and slightly after that. So about 50 to 100 milliseconds before the actual shot broke and then 250 to 300 ish milliseconds after the shot broke. It adds up all of the actual vibration in a given frequency and it takes into consideration the energy there as far as how much it's oscillating, the length of time it's oscillating, how hard it's oscillating, etc in that specific frequency and not just necessarily the peak total vibration as far as how hard it hits it's how much it's continuing to vibrate after the fact so i made a spreadsheet where i put all of the data in the spreadsheet i shot three shots of each setup and i wanted to average each three shot because it does vary slightly release changes all sorts of different things change and it really affects the way the whole system reacts so I took an average of the three and base everything off of the aluminum dampener because it's what really used to come on all the Hoyts except for this new GMX3 series. Like I said, it now has a steel uh, tiller bolt that is laser etched. And you'll see that the aluminum dampener was 2.5897 and then it dropped down to the, st uh, the stock steel dampener 2.5416 and then the precision tiller bolts 375, 2.3361. And you can basically see there's relatively no difference between steel and aluminum. The steel does dampen a little bit more at 1.86% more dampening as far as the amount of energy that is reduced in the entire system, possibly being absorbed by the actual mass weight of the tiller bolt. But when you have a nice fitting tiller bolt, you can see that there's a dramatic up to a 9.79% reduction here in my test, comparing an aluminum ill-fitting tiller bolt to a stainless steel precision machined tiller bolt on this riser with that particular set of limbs that were axias at the time. When comparing between the stock steel tiller bolt that comes on this GMX3 and the precision tiller bolts, there's an 8.09% reduction when using precision tiller bolts. So not only do we see a massive reduction in actual vibration and total energy in the system going to precision fit 
tiller bolts. But also in the past, I have done some testing that shows that you're far more consistent, especially if you bump your bow, you bump your limbs left and right. Also, it makes aligning your limbs and your bow much, much easier because the fit is just so much more precise and consistent. It's a fun little test that I was really glad to be able to do while I was over there in Austria working on a few different projects. We were able to gather some data and it's really, really neat to see actual numbers because numbers don't lie. I'm a data guy and I can say, yeah, it feels better. There's less vibration in the system, but how much and by what amount or in what frequency, how can I actually show the data? And I can actually produce this data now and show it to you, thanks to Thomas. I'm really hoping to be able to get some of the equipment that he's got here in the States, so that way I can do a bit more testing in regards to maybe how does a carbon riser feel versus an aluminum riser? What's the total amount of reduction in vibration or different sets of limbs or brace height or tiller and all sorts of different things. And it would be stuff that I'm very interested in sharing with you, like I said. I'm a numbers guy, I like to gather data, and I wanna share it with you. And if you like this kind of stuff, please comment below and let me know what you think about the actual data, what you think about this kind of stuff, and what you think about the format of the video. Because I'm very interested in sharing this kind of stuff with you. And if you're interested as well, I'll definitely do more of it. Now, like I said, if you're interested in grabbing a set of precision tiller bolts, please do head to my website, jkaminski.com, and grab a set. Also, if you're interested in these precision tiller bolts for a riser that I don't yet have uh, compatibility with as far as you know support please comment below and let me know what riser you'd like to see them on because if I don't know what people are interested in I won't be able to produce them and also if there's a lot more interest in one particular riser versus another I'll focus on that one first I have a couple in the works already and uh, we'll definitely be releasing those in the near future along with like I said a few other projects that we're working on very exciting stuff in the future I can't wait to bring it to you. It's been a lot of work behind the scenes, not just on archery stuff, but on life stuff too. So I really appreciate everybody's patience with a bit of lapse in content lately. Things have just been nuts in my life. And uh, hopefully I'll have a lot more time in the very near future. I in fact expect to have a lot more time in the very near future for this kind of stuff and bringing you just more content in general. Hey, if you like this video, consider sharing it. Genuinely, that helps this channel grow. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell down below so that way you get notified when I do upload new content. And if you wouldn't mind, please do consider supporting this channel. There's many different links in the description below. I can't thank my supporters enough. Without you, I wouldn't be able to produce this content, at least not to this level. So thanks.